Welcome back everyone to this section on Python object and data structure basics. So in this section of the course, we're going to start off by discussing basic data types. And these are your basic building blocks of code when constructing larger pieces of code. And we're going to quickly discuss all the possible data types that we're going to talk about in this section. And then we'll have lectures that go into a lot more detail about each one. So don't worry about memorizing all the information shown here. This is more just a quick overview, and there's going to be a lecture on each of these data types as we go on throughout this section. So the data types that we're going to be discussing are the following in this table. Here we have the name of the data type on that left-hand column, and then there's the type. So what that means is just Python has an internal keyword for this name, and you're not going to get the whole word integer, the whole word floating point. Instead, Python has kind of a shortened keyword. So that's the second column, such as int for integer, str for strings, etc. Then we have the description column, and that's just going to be what the actual description of the data type is. So let's quickly go through these. We start off with integers, and those are just basic whole numbers, such as 3, 300, 200. Then we have floating point numbers, and those are numbers of a decimal point, 2.3, 4.6, 100.0. And notice here that if even if you have 100.0, that still counts as a floating point number. That's no longer an integer because it has a decimal point. Then after that, we have strings. And strings are an ordered sequence of characters. You can think of these as just kind of words. But you should also note they can be numbers as well as foreign characters inside of a string. The main thing that denotes a string is that it either has double quotes or single quotes. Here we can see we have hello in double quotes, Sammy in single quotes. We have the digits of 2000 inside double quotes. That makes it a string. It's no longer just an integer because it has double quotes around it. And then you can also see we have some Japanese characters inside double quotes. Then we come to data structures. And data structures are a little more specialized than basic data types and data objects because they can actually hold data objects in some sort of sequence or in some sort of mapping. So here we have lists. And these are an ordered sequence of objects. Here we can see that we've been able to use square brackets and commas to have a sequence of other objects, such as the number 10, uh, the string hello, and then the number 200.3. Dictionaries are another data structure that can store other data types, except in this case, instead of having an ordered sequence, they have unordered key value pairs. And we'll be discussing in a lot more detail how dictionaries work. But here we can see that we have a key then a colon, and then a value. And it's denoted by curly braces as far as if it's a dictionary instead of just being a normal list, which has square brackets. But then we can have something like name, and then colon, and then the value of that name is Frankie. Again, we'll be discussing dictionaries in a lot more detail. After dictionaries, we have tuples. Sometimes they're also called tuples. And these are ordered immutable sequences of objects. They look a lot like lists, except they have parentheses. And they're immutable, meaning you cannot change an object that's already in that sequence. So we'll be discussing what immutable means in a lot more detail when discussing tuples. Then we have sets, which are an unordered collection of unique objects. And again, we'll talk about that in a lot more detail. They're a little similar to a dictionary, but they don't have key value pairs. Instead, they're just unique objects in some unordered collection. So you don't have that colon key value pair. Again, we'll discuss it in more detail later on. Then finally, we'll talk about Booleans, which are just logical value, values indicating true or false. Notice how we have capital T and capital F. That sort of syntax is necessary for Python. So those are all the basic data types. Again, don't worry if you didn't understand any of this or didn't want to memorize any of this. We're going to have a lecture on basically each of these topics in a lot more detail and show you how you can use them to write your own code. OK, let's get started. I'll see you at the next lecture.